Hi guys, I'm Ian Munro and today I'm going to take a normal portrait and turn it into something with wow. Today, my son-in-law Jack has come to the studio and we've decided to try and sort of tell a story where we can take one portrait and tell a different story in a different environment by creating a kind of environmental portrait. By doing this, we're going to, once the lights are set, we're going to keep everything the same, but we're just going to change up the model. We're going to change Jack up. We're going to accessorize him. We're going to stick an old boiler suit on him covered in dirt and mud and grime. Uh, we're going to stick a hard hat on him, we're going to light the hard hat, and we're going to basically, we're going to create a story, a lie if you like, and something that you can take from it by not taking two images, by not changing the lighting setup. So Jack arrived and we set about setting the lights and the backdrop and everything we needed for the portrait. Now, we did this, we got our settings right. I think it was something like uh, F8, 1 60th of a second. We got, got ourselves sort of warmed up for the environmental portrait shot, or portrayal uh, of this character by d dialing in on Jack, getting things as we wanted it before we move on to get Jack dressed up in the costume and the outfit that he was going to wear. So the lighting setup for this today, it was a three light setup. There were two strip boxes, soft boxes, with the egg crates on the front, and they were, they were set just probably about uh, 12 inches or so behind the model and at a 45 degree angle out to the model's sort of arms, arms and legs. This added a rim light to Jack, okay? And then the third light, that was, again, that was a 27 inch beauty dish, again with grid, on top, high above and facing down 45 degrees. We kept the crate on the front, the grid on the front rather, and what that does is that channels and punches the light into a dedicated area. This area I wanted more than anything was the, the front of his face and down the front of the chest area. We did come across a problem that was combated quite easily really by adding a reflector I kept the, the gold side of the reflector just to warm it up a bit and pump some of the light from the beauty dish above back into Jack's sort of waist, waistline area where things were getting a bit dark. For the normal portrait, Jack was wearing black, the background, background was black and it kind of complemented each other. So we really exaggerated the strip boxes on the side uh, creating this wonderful rim light. The distance between uh, Jack and the two soft boxes, as you can see, is probably arm's length, about six foot, and just slightly behind the model. Again, uh, Jack was stood probably about three foot from the background. The third light, the beauty dish above, that was probably, I would, I would hazard a guess, around about seven or eight foot above. We had to fuss around with it somewhat just to get the right angle where it would bounce off the reflector and fill in some light around the waist area. We encountered a few hot spots that were basically toned down somewhat with the strip lights so that it just added that sort of glow around the edge of our model. So after nailing the, the portrait of Jack and keeping Jack happy with a nice picture to go away with, we endeavored to create this character, this cave rescue guy, that's been rescuing people that were trapped in a cave maybe uh, and had to sort of climb and hang from height. What this involved was the boiler suit that, that's been used in some of my images before and also a harness and carabiner clips and all sorts of climbing rope and equipment. I found this, I had the heads up off a friend and they were thrown out, they were thrown into the skip for rubbish and basically we managed to get all of this stuff, the harnesses and stuff, uh, free, just purely by scavenging and putting word of mouth about, about for people with sort of rock climbing equipment and gear. We set about getting Jack into his boiler suit and then afterwards with some messing around and tinkering we managed to get the boiler suit on and then the complicated process of well, we didn't know any different actually, so stepping into the harness and adjusting the straps and the cables and the clips, 
That proved to be slightly problematic due to lack of knowledge, but in the end we got there and once the hat was fitted on Jack's head and adjusted, then we switched the headlamp on and away we go. The only thing left now was to pose Jack in the suitable poses that would suit the lighting setup. Because remember, this lighting setup, this three light setup, it hasn't changed at all from the portrait to the portrayal. From Jack in his normal clothes to Jack the heroic cave rescue guy. So we haven't changed anything at all. We've literally accessorized Jack and you notice how the boiler suit takes on a different sort of, and all the mud, different textures, different colors that complement the black background, etc., and really does stand out. Last of all, the harness, that looks fantastic. It's still quite new, you see, so we, we did have a choice whether or not to sort of cover it in dirt and mud, but we thought otherwise because Again, the colours and the punchiness coming out of this otherwise dark and dingy image, uh, I think is suited better, kept relatively clean. Last but not least, we managed to splatter Jack's face and hands uh, in mud. And what that also helped with was the two side strip lights and actually the booty dish above. That helped Jack any highlights that were forcing some hot spots that toned things down somewhat. So all in all, we just had to pose Jack. We did this by having Jack stand in rather than seated, and we exaggerated his stance, his leg space, to around about, I would say about 16 to 20 inches apart, and exaggerated the sort of gap between his legs. This made for better composition, to be honest, and the ropes and the cables, the straps, they could hang loosely and give that impression that he's ready for business. The other thing it does as well, it also frames off the image somewhat and caps things off. I was mindful not to chop Jack off at the knees or the shins, and I think it's quite suitable just to come below the sort of the crotch area and capture the, the any floating cables and clips. We also set Jack slightly to a 45 degree stance with his feet, but he twisted his top off just to camera and then put his face dead to camera. What that does is that evens the light on each side of his face and levels up the straps on his helmet that we, we took a few shots with the helmet, unclipped, then clipped. And I think clipped perhaps suited that bit better. So today was the second time of using the Sony a7R 4 in the studio. Usually when we take in portraits or set builds, or for that matter, any type of image, there usually is a process that we go through until we're in the zone where we can start clicking and nailing those pictures. So far, our, well, our sessions have been cut a hell of a lot shorter because the introduction of the iPhone auto tracking, etc., has enabled us to get the pictures done straight away. So that keeps the images down to a minimum. Usually for a, for a session, you could take anything from sort of 50 plus images. Right now we're working in 10, maybe 15 images before we get the image that we want. We ended up being very happy with the final images. You can see them now on your screen, and I think you'll agree that considering the lighting setup hasn't changed at all, there are indeed two different portraits, but the one is a portrayal. It's a portrait with wow factor. It's a portrait that gets you thinking in terms of uh, who is this guy, where's he been, what does he do, and the rest you can make up yourself. But by scavenging few bits and pieces and setting things up, all in all, it was a free shoot. It didn't cost anything. Yes, we were fortunate enough to grab hold of the gear, but this just goes to show that you, you're bound to have stuff hanging around in the attic or in the house where you can create this character that, let's be fair, if I hadn't told you that Jack was my son-in-law and I told you that he was a cave rescue guy, you'd probably, well, you'd probably believe me. But that's the, that's the power of creating portraits with WoW and character portraits. Um, well, they become portrayals then. So I hope you've enjoyed this. It's a, it's a quick how-to really and how to un unlock your imagination. So if, you, if you've enjoyed it, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel, go visit the website and you can follow along with the, the latest projects that myself, Deeks and Gaz do at Skint Creative. Mm -hmm.